person in the money is going to the local community elementary and secondary school for sporting equipment and uh, uniforms and whatnot like that. So all girls should be supported. <laughs> time if you would help us out get on over to all our social media platforms facebook give us a uh, like and follow go to our youtube channel uh, fish hunt nw and of course you can subscribe so never miss any of the additional content we put out there check out our web page www.fishhuntnw.com you're also going to find a coupon code there for edge rods fhn20 all edge rods are 20 percent off all the time unless they fall underneath or with a uh, uh, different coupon code or special. So through Fish on Northwest and Edge Rods, you're getting 20% off all Fish and Rods all the time. Uh, yes, welcome to the show. Welcome everybody here streaming live tonight. We've got another great show lined up. Lots of good content. Some controversial stuff already yes. in its ugly head, Tommy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, man, you just when you think we have a lack of potential content, there's never a lack of content. There never is. State, you know, it's just no. kind of crazy how all this stuff goes. So, uh, by the way, Paul has officially arrived. 
Well, is it? Is it? Well, on the calendar was September 22nd. Yeah. Okay. The calendar was September 22nd, but after today, this nice little push of rain, mm-hmm. we've been wanting rain, and I've been following the forecast and paying attention. Careful what you ask for. Dang. It's coming. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's going to be here this week, and we'll get into all that here in a little bit as well, but thank God the rain is finally here. Maybe we'll get a handle on some of these fires and uh, start knocking down some of the smoke. It's that would be nice. Bad the last couple of days, so hopefully you haven't had to battle too much smoke where you reside, but uh, we've had it in around the Olympia area for quite some time, so um, hey, I want to remind everybody, also tonight going on, we'd prefer if you just stay here and watch us and catch up on this later, but WDFW Tommy is hosting the first installment of the virtual town hall meeting via Zoom. You can go to our Facebook page and get all the information there, click on the link, the Zoom meeting for Steelhead Management as we roll into this 2022-2023 season. Uh, lots of folks are curious where we're going to land as far as, you know, do we get the steelhead fish this year, north coast, south coast, where are we going to end up, or is everything going to simply be up north, you know, <clears throat> north sound with some opportunities. So tune in, follow along on these virtual meetings. There's going to be a few of them as we work our way through the fall here, setting up that potential winter steelhead season. So just want to remind everybody of that. Uh, great info hopefully coming out of there, and I'm going to catch up on that later, hopefully not be too disappointed with the lack of opportunity. I think we got a shot this year. I think I think we got a shot. So uh, we'll see where that goes. All right, before we get too far along here, running down the show, lots of content to get through, as always. Just back from El Camp, Tommy Donlin himself, was he successful? The full story and lessons learned coming up after the break. And as we mentioned, hey, we got a weather change that's finally here. <clears throat> it is coming in. Uh, what you need to know to be ready, where to look for reliable intel before you hit these rivers. We're going to walk you through that process, and I think you're going to enjoy that. Uh, an FHN quick tip tonight, Tommy, the weed grabber. Uh, once you see it, you'll understand why I use it and how uh, really well it works. Then we're bringing back a longtime friend, the second half of the show, Tom Ryle, Pacific Northwest bow hunting, black tail hunting, and this weather change. Will it be beneficial, Tommy? Will it? I think uh, folks will be surprised. WDFW under attack once again. The inaugural Washington Fish and Wildlife Management Reform Convention sounds pretty fancy. You will not believe this. Stick around because we're going to break that down for you so you understand. Once again, they're falling under attack. Then we'll close out the show. And that's an iffy game because you know, you got to play the thermals. Yep. You got to hope that they're still feeding yep. in the morning, yep. right? And so, you know, sometimes it's a strikeout and sometimes you're going to intercept them. Well, you and Mark out of the entire group ended up both getting out. You got spikes, we right? We, just, we got spikes. But you weren't seeing squat. We weren't seeing squat. So when I got down into my zone, I was I was thinking to myself, you know, I did a lot of work to get to where I was. Yeah. But I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to bugle. I'm going to bugle. And I got a very, a very intense bugling lesson earlier that day from one of the guys that's a pro in camp yeah. uh, for about an hour and a half, right? And uh, I was using the, the green amp, Kelps amp, Kelps, right? Yeah. Uh, Diver mm-hmm. call. Um, in the beagle tube, right? And so I go out there and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm not seeing anything. I'm not hearing anything. You know, what What can I lose with this situation, right? Tough conditions. So, boom, I rip out a bugle, chuckle a little bit. You know, very generic, right? No answer. And I'm like, ah, I didn't really expect a response. Sure. And then two minutes later, this spike comes running down the hill looking for the party. Want to see what's right? going on. Yeah. And just, just a solo. He was by himself. You know, no cows, no other bull, nothing. And, um, I pick him up and I'm thinking, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking like, there's a lot of big bulls here, but at the same time, you know, these veterans, the guys that got 30 bulls to their name, yeah. one of the guys had 40 bulls plus to his name, I'm thinking, they would say, you know, the conditions are such where, you know, they would consider a spike. And I'm thinking, well, you know, you don't have to tell me twice. I want the meat, right? Yep. First and foremost. And so, you know, he's running down the hill, stops by the tree. I'm thinking, okay, am I going to get a shot of this guy? Because he's looking, he's looking for the bugle. So you got the spike down the hill. Stop behind the tree. Yeah, stop behind the tree. Freeze right there. Yep. We're going to come back with part two of this. All right. Uh, later on the show, so don't go anywhere. Tommy, does he feel the deal? Does he get the spike? I guess we'll find out. Don't go anywhere. Jump out for a quick break. We come back. We're going to talk through some conditions, <laughs> river conditions, weather conditions, parts of grass for you to look at, and how to be ready for when these rivers get on the drop. Right here, Fish on Northwest. This is a radiated tortoise. Because of the support from AZ, I'm able to put these endangered tortoises back into the wild. When I was younger, watching scuba divers conserve these magnificent creatures, 
by wanting to be a part of that. I work in Hawaii with critically endangered forest birds. Birds are so interesting to me because they're living dinosaurs. I love working with them. They know I always want to work with the conservation side. It's exactly where I'm supposed to be. Won't you join us? The future of connectivity is here, where mobile and internet work hand in hand to create one seamless network that works to automatically block threats. Powerful enough to run smart cities, yet made for you. This is Spectrum One. Internet, advanced Wi-Fi, and mobile working together as one. That's seamless connectivity. That's Spectrum One. Man. Want to feel younger, stronger, leaner? You don't have to slow down after 40. Nugenix Total T is our most powerful man-boosting formula ever. Text Peak to 321321 for your complimentary bottle of Nugenix Total T. Plus, text now and we'll include a bottle of Nugenix Thermo, our most powerful fat incinerator ever. With key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast, absolutely free. That's S-E-E-K. 231321. All right, welcome back to Fish Under with Wes. So, Tommy, we got a bit of change of weather coming. Today was kind of an indicator. We got some rain that showed up actually this afternoon versus later, later this evening, early morning. And I've uh, been wanting the rain to get here. And you know me, I'm a weather nut when it comes to river conditions, uh, rainfall, accumulations. That you are. Extremely dry conditions now. What's it going to do to the water? How dirty is it going to mm -hmm. get, right? All those things come into factor when you're trying to figure out, okay, when can we get back to fishing? First of all, we have to get enough rain that WDFW opens back up these rivers. And they have indicated uh, they're watching the gauge as well. And as they've seen uptick in water, and they know they're going to rise and have to get on the fall. So they got a couple days to go ahead and announce it gives us a couple days to you know be ready for it to go. So uh, where do I go for information? What do I pay attention to? Well, you know, you can pull up AccuWeather. Uh, it typically gives you a good, you can look at the month and you can kind of gauge how much rainfall. If you click on each one of those and pull up the total rain accumulation per day, Day, I can actually add those up throughout the week and get an overall rain accumulation over five, six, seven day period that kind of tells me what we're in for. Two inches, you know, if I look at this week here, we're in for about two, two and a half inches of rain. How much is that going to affect the weather? Well, that is one you know, place to go to kind of look at, for me, comparisons, right? I really like to go to the NOAA site, the Northwest River Forecast Center. First, I look at the 10-day meteorological forecast of rain, and that's, you know, when you pull that slide up, now this, uh, the first one on the far left is always your rain indicator, um, and that is, uh, that's from a couple of days ago. We haven't had any rain, but as you roll through the week, and we get later into the week, and I, and I stack the six uh, days together there, you're going to see a pretty significant amount of rain uh, for six, seven, eight days in a row if I just keep going on that chart. We got a uh, solid seven, eight days coming. If it's yellow on the tops of those ridge mountains, you're getting in excess of one inch up in the mountains. Dark green down the lower valleys and whatnot is at least a half to three quarters of an inch. So when I start stacking these accumulations up, which tend to be a lot more accurate than Accu weather, uh, this is where I start leaning heavily towards after a five or six day accumulation. We're looking at two and a half to almost three inches of rain. How does that affect our rivers? Well, the nice thing about the NOAA River Forecast Center, you get the 10-day, and you can also click on to the River Forecast Center, which really paints a picture. Now, I pulled up four different rivers throughout the Northwest. Uh, one or two of them are up north or mid mid uh, Puget Sound, and some are out here on the coast. And you can see we have a common theme here. The red indicates where these rivers are going to go. The current uh, situation is the blue line. The green portion of that is what's coming in the next 24 hours or so or the next couple days but that red line really end up <clears throat> indicates what we're in for and what you'll see on all of those is we have a steady rise and they haven't peaked yet right we have to bump that another day or two as the calendar clicks along here to truly see when those rivers are going to crest and when they're going to get on the fall yeah and this looks out what about one week yeah that well so that one right there if i remember right it, it punches it out there to like the 30th okay so it's a it's a 8 to 10 day forecast to indicate where that river's going to go. 
Now, sometimes it's run on par, other times um, you're going to see that the line varies a little from the actual. The other one you can compare the projection to is the actual tell of what's going on right now, USGS Water Resource Center. That one's going to give you the actual current. If the, water, if the river has a current gauge on it, it'll give you the gauge of what's currently going on like right now, and you can also gauge on that based on rate of raise and rate of fall. You can kind of put those two together and understand, well, when is this river going to get back into shape uh, so it's fishable? Now, the one thing we'll be up against here with two and a half to three inches of rain coming over the next week is the turbidity in all these rivers is just going to be absolutely horrible. Right. This is the first real rain we've got. First washout, right. right? So all the dry leaves, all the dry sticks, all the dust and debris, all the stuff on the shorelines is going to get swooped up and washed down. And so these, uh, these rivers are going to be dirty for three, four, five days. Now, the one thing we have going in our favor also is Sunday night, Monday, we're finally going to dip down into about 35, 36 degree temperatures. And we'll get into uh, what that's going to do in the woods here with Tom Ryle uh, next segment uh, yeah. down the road here. But uh, as far as river forecasting, cooler temperatures in the evening helps you get the rivers cleaned up faster, right? So uh, in our in our daytime highs are going to be substantially cooler as well. So we do need the water to come. We do need the rivers to rise. One, to get the rivers back open. Two, those fish are going to be moving. If, uh, if you're not familiar, Coho, like out here in Grays Harbor, they can be to the hatchery on the south of within 24 to 36 hours. That's amazing. Coho yeah. will travel upwards of 20, 25 miles in a 24-hour period. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just flat out. If the water is conducive to them, they move. Right. So you have to be ready to get on the water when it gets on the drop. And I would wait until it's dropped a day or two to get the clarity, get that mm -hmm. back to yeah. four, six feet of green visibility that we like. And I think you're going to be happy with your results. And this is why we keep uh, logs, river logs, because if you have done this in the past and tracked it and you find success at certain levels on these gauges, you want to document that and duplicate that yeah, for sure. years down the road. So a little insight as to what's to come and what you can do uh, in forecasting your rivers, and hopefully those sites will help you out, and you too can find some success. Thank God the rain is finally going to be here, Tommy. Amen. I can't wait. Fishing and hunting is going to take a turn for the better. Now, uh, with that, we're going to jump out for a quick break. We'll come back. Uh, going to jump you right into this week's FHN Quick Tip. Going to show you that little weed grabber stick that I used out there in the harbor to prevent weeds and seaweed getting on your gear. Uh, that'll be here right after this break, right here at Fishing Northwest. Contract Security Service provides day-to-day -day peace of mind as they protect people and property. Here at Phoenix, we provide service for multiple state and federal contracts with services ranging from uniform, patrol, alarm monitoring, canine detection, executive protection, as well as investigative work. Recruiting highly qualified officers is the first step in building a strong team. If you are prior military or law enforcement, go to www.phoenixprotectivecorps.com and apply today. under the grace and that if you break the commandments you're not going to go to hell whereas before before Jesus Christ came came in the flesh when you broke the commandments you did suffer the potential of maybe going on going to hell having hellfire upon you you know like David he didn't have Christ yet, and he killed Uriah the Hittite so that he could take Uriah the Hittite's wife and do his concubine right Moses killed the guy right so they, they all committed grievous sins did they go to hell of course not but there is no Christ to save them. Why? Because the grace of the Most High Power is more powerful than His laws. He wants you to obey His laws, but He wants you to believe in His grace more. Okay? And so when people are picking on you, or people are trying to fuck with your head, I apologize for the, for the curse words. Okay? But you have to understand for the type of audience that I have here, 
I have to speak in the language that they speak, and they use a lot of curse words, okay? So I have to speak the language they speak, so number one, I don't appear self-righteous, okay? And so I don't uh, uh, appear as, uh, you know, holier than thou, so to speak, okay? So you have to be willing to speak in a language that, that, you're, that people can understand, that your followers can understand, okay? So when people are screwing with your mind or people, because that, that's all that the devil tries to do and his children are the same thing, which is the CIA, and which is, uh, the CIA is a completely corrupt and evil satanic institution, and I think everyone is aware of that by now. They go to other nations and, and overthrow those nations and and uh, kill the whoever's leading those nations and then, and then insert some puppet, some muppet, some guy that's going to take their bribes, take America's bribes, and then exploit their own citizens, his or her own citizens, for our benefit, which is this so wrong and so grotesquely evil on so many levels, and brings curses to the entire populace of America, which is why you're seeing America becoming destroyed, and you're seeing the economy of America be destroyed, the moral fiber of America be destroyed, everybody's miserable, everybody's in a bad mood, I'm not, but um, but I have a, you know, I don't live by the standards of a typical American where they live by standards and just have to do Masonic materialism and they don't care about anything else. And then they wonder later why their son and daughter committed suicide, you know, before they turn 21. They wonder why they're popping pills all the time and why their wife or their husband is nothing but a drunk. And you brought curses upon yourselves and now you're going to have to live with those curses because you turned your back on God. And, and even worse than that, you're supporting an institution, the CIA, and the FBI that are out there making enemies and villains out of innocent people.